Hello again. Glad to see you made it to episode 7. If you watched all the episodes until this point, I congratulate you. I promise you will have no problem following along. It may sound like your teacher, but before I begin, I have to ask. Are you actively processing the information I am giving, or just mindlessly typing it down? I hope you are the former. Another question. Have you looked up any other resources? If you are only watching my videos, you will be severely limiting your knowledge. If you haven't, close this video right now and go do that. I'm only trying to help you learn and I believe this to be the best way. If you would like to strengthen your learning skills, check out this video made by Maggie at Code Academy. I will have a card on screen and a link in the description. And yes, learning is a skill. We are going to make a new project today so we can train our memory. I challenge you to try and do the setup on your own. If you need help, feel free to follow along. First I'm going to make sure I am creating a Java project and then I am going to select JDK 16 as my Java version because I am making a 1.17 plugin and 1.17 requires Java 16. I am going to name my plugin Essentials as we will be making a few functions from the popular plugin. First, I need to add bucket as a dependency. Now, I'm going to create the package that will contain my project. Then, I'm going to create my main class. I typically name my main class the name of my plugin followed by the word plugin. So in this case, I am going to name my main class Essentials Plugin. Since it is our main class, it is going to extend Java Plugin and inherit all its fields. Now we need to override our onEnable and onDisable functions. Next, I am going to create my plugin.yml. Remember to put this file in your source folder. I am not going to go over these fields again. If you want an in-depth explanation, check out the previous video. And just like that, we are done setting up our plugin. You will get better at this with time. Now let's make our plugin do something. We are going to create a command that sends a message to the player when they type it in. To keep things organized, I am going to put this command in its own class, in its own package. I'm going to name the package commands, and all of my commands will go in this package. Then I'm going to create a class named ping command, as this is the command we are going to be making. If you are unfamiliar with this command, all it does is send a message back to the player. This class is going to implement command executor. Implementation is another way that classes can inherit fields from other classes, except instead of being a class, command executor is an interface. Since it is an interface and not a class, we use implement instead of extends. This is a basic definition, but we will expand on it in the future. If we look at the command executor class, we can see that it is in fact an interface, not a class. Next, we need to implement the onCommand method. You may notice I said the word method for the first time. We will talk about the difference between methods and functions in the future, but for now think of them as one and the same. So our method onCommand has a data type of a boolean. A boolean is a true or false value, on or off, one or zero. You can see our method returns false. The bucket API interprets this as the command running incorrectly and will send the player the default help message. We want to customize our own command error messages, so we are going to return true so bucket doesn't handle it. We will talk more about returning information in the future. For now, just make sure this line stays at the bottom of your method. I'm going to change the variable names for some of the parameters in our method. I recommend you do the same. Okay, now let's talk a little bit more about data types. A data type signifies what type of information is being stored in a variable. A variable is a piece of memory that contains a value. Variables store information for you to use in your program. They also provide a way to label information. So let's create a variable. I'm going to create a variable that has a data type of a string. A string is a sequence of characters stored in memory. So we can use this to store information in the form of alphanumeric characters or symbols such as names or sentences. This variable is going to hold the message we will send to the player. To create a string, simply surround your message with double quotes. And there you go, you have made your first variable. 
Just to explain what's going on here, this first piece of information is the data type of the variable. This is what type of information our variable is going to be storing. The second part here is the name of your variable. This is how you will reference this piece of information. You want to make sure to use camel case whenever you name your variables. And then we use the equals operator to set the value of this variable and whatever comes after this operator will be the value. Now let's send that string we just created to the player as a message. I have been saying player this entire time, but you could also run this command as the console. The variable sender that is passed into our method is the sender of the command. So whether it's the player or console or a command block, this variable represents that entity. So let's send our message to that sender. To use a variable, simply type the identifier. In this case, it is the sender. The data type of this variable is command sender. Command sender is a class from the bucket API. The use of classes as data types is known as object-oriented programming. We will talk a lot about this topic in this series. For now, just know that command sender is a class and we are using it as a data type. If you want to look at the command sender class, use control N and type in command sender. We can use all of these methods by accessing this class. Now let's send that message to the command sender. To do this, we can simply call a method from the bucket API that allows us to send messages to the sender. To call a method from our sender, simply add a period followed by the method name. If you use control P, you can see a list of all of the available methods. The methods we are looking for is the send message method. Select the top one with only a string as a parameter. Now type your variable's name into this method as a parameter by typing in between the parentheses. If you want, you could also input the string directly in here between two double quotes. We are not finished yet. Now we need to tell the server we made a command. There are two steps we need to take to register our command. First, we are going to head over to our plugin.yml file. Let's talk a little bit about YML files and what is special about them. YML or YAML files are a way of storing and organizing information. You can store information by using a key value pair. The key in a key value pair is the identifier of the information. The value is what is being stored by that identifier, very similar to a variable. For example, we use the key name to hold the name of our plugin. Name is the identifier, the key, and essentials is the information, the value. Same with the main class, version, and API version, all key value pairs. YML files are structured like a tree, just like our packages. So the name key is identified as just name, and main is identified as main. But let's add a new path here named commands. Make sure to put a colon afterwards as it is part of the syntax in defining a path. Now under that line, with an additional two spaces, this path is going to be named ping, the command we will type in game. This is going to be followed by a colon. If you wanted to access this ping value, you would need to use the identifier commands.ping because it is contained within the commands path. It is typical to name all path and keys in lowercase. Let's talk about syntax. A colon represents a path, meaning there is no information being stored. A colon followed by a space means the path contains information. This path is a key. That's enough about YML file structure, and without even knowing it, you registered your command. You can add optional attributes to your command, but for now, we are keeping it simple. Head back on over to your main class, where we will finish registering our command. In your onEnable method, called the method get command from the Java plugin class. Since our main class extends Java plugin, we can just type get command. Then input the string you want to be your command. This needs to be the same as the path you created in your plugin.yml. Then we are going to call the method setExecutor. We can call a method after we call another method because the first method we called returned a data type and we can daisy chain off that to run another method. So instead of running the method, then storing the returned value in a variable, we can run it immediately after calling the first method. If you look at the Java plugin class, you can see the get command method returns the value of plugin command. And in the plugin command class, you can see the set executor method. If we try to run another method after this, we will be unsuccessful because the set executor method is void. For the parameter of the set executor class, you need to pass in an instance of the class which contains your command. Instances can be difficult to explain, but I will do my best. Think of your code in this text editor as dead. 
It is not alive at this time because the program is not using it. When we start up our server and our plugin becomes alive, we consider that as creating an instance of our plugin. The server clones this file and stores it in memory. So in order to make our ping command class alive, we need to create a new instance of it. And this instance will get passed into the setExecutor method. To create an instance of a new class, use the word new followed by the name of the class followed by two parentheses. When we defined our message, we created a new instance of the string class. But instead of using the keyword new, we used two double quotes to indicate our information was a string. We will talk more about instances in the future. You have now successfully registered your command. Let's build our project and head on over to the test server. As you can see, if we type in ping, we get our message said back to us. If you made it to the end, congratulations. Next time, we will be creating a slightly more complex command. That's all for today, and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.